So last time I brought this out, it ran supersonic ammo just fine, didn't want to run subs. Took it home, pulled the gas block, the handguard, made sure that it was aligned, cleaned and oiled it really well. And I put a three ounce buffer and a reduced power spring in here. Let's see if that makes a difference today. Supers first. We're in the subs. Ooh, I like it. Welcome back to Sawtooth Tactical. I am stoked. The reason I got my 300 Blackout to reliably run subsonic ammunition. And it was a pretty easy fix. So if you are building a 300 Blackout, if you already have one, if you're trying to figure out how to make it work, maybe this video can help you out. If so, make sure you're subscribed and let's watch. All right, things are looking good. That first magazine had 20 supers, 10 subs. This one's all subs, uh, two different brands though, because I wanted to try and see if the ammo might've been part of the problem. Maybe it wasn't because the subs in that last mag were the same ones that I was running last week. But let's see how this does. Let's shoot a couple into the dirt, see how it sounds. We ran a few. You guys might remember last week I finally got approved for my first suppressor. There's a whip machine and tool, Dirty 30. It's a 30 cal suppressor that I filed the NFA paperwork for a year ago almost by now, and it took a little bit over 11 months, and I finally got the approval. I built this 300 blackout build over a year ago as my ultimate home defense build. I set it up exactly as I personally feel like a home defense carbine should be set up. It's got a decent light. This is a Streamlight Protac HLX. It's got a great optic. This is the Holosun HS512C. It's got the circle dot reticle like an EOTech, a huge clear window, shake awake, everything that I would want in a home defense, close quarters engagement type of optic. I also SBR'd this build and got the approval for the SBR the day after the suppressor. So I'm no longer running a pistol brace. I finally got a B5 Bravo stock on here, FDE to match the rest of the build. And I've got the suppressor. Well, what happened last week is I took it out. I was all excited. It ran supersonic ammo just fine like it always has. And as soon as I tried to run subs, it would only run a round or two before short stroking, or it would fire around, eject, but not pick up the next round. Basically, there wasn't enough power in the, super, in the subsonic ammo to cycle the bolt carrier group and run the system. So there are a few things that could cause that. I mean, obviously, Subsonic ammo doesn't have as much of a powder charge as supersonic ammo does. That's part of what makes it under the sound barrier. Um, so I had a few options as to what I could do to make this thing run reliably. Um, a lot of people told me that I should get an adjustable gas block on it, but an adjustable gas block can't give you any more gas. It can only regulate the amount of gas that you're already getting through your gas block and gas tube into your system. And I wasn't getting enough gas. So an adjustable gas block, I didn't see how it could help me. The other thing that I could have done was to drill out the gas port, make that bigger. 
that would get me more gas. And then if it was over gassed, then I could install an adjustable gas block to regulate the amount of gas that I was getting at that point. But my first thought was tune the buffer system. The reason for that being when I built this rifle at the time, pistol, it, I used the Geisley Super 42 buffer system with an H2 buffer. Well, that setup ran supersonic ammo perfectly reliably. It worked great. Um, I didn't know at the time when I purchased that, but when I opened up the packaging, read everything, Geisley doesn't recommend their Super 42 system for subsonic 300 blackout uh, because the spring tension is higher than a normal buffer spring and so it has a hard time cycling lower powered ammunition. Well, I had hoped that that wouldn't be a problem, but it was. And uh, Geisley was right about their own product. What do you know? <laughs> so anyway, I figured, well, that's the first thing to do is see if I can tune the buffer system before I start drilling out my gas port and making irreversible changes to my firearm. So I tried a couple other buffers. I tried the one out of my 11.5 first. Still didn't really run reliably. Tried the one out of my 16 inch rifle. It ran better, but still not reliably. So what did I do? I ordered a three ounce standard carbine buffer and a Springco yellow spring. Yellow is their reduced power spring. And I hoped and prayed that that would take care of the problem. And it did. I got the spring and buffer in the mail today. I installed it, took it out to the range, and the thing ran almost perfectly. I put two magazines through it, 60 rounds, and I had one malfunction. That's a lot better than it was last week. And the one malfunction, of course, was with a subsonic round. I tried three different kinds of ammo today. I started with Ammo Incorporated Supersonic 150 grain. It ran those no problem, as expected. Then I went with the Ammo Incorporated Stealth 220 grain subsonic loads. This is the same ammo that I was running last week that it wouldn't cycle reliably. And it ran it great. And so I was very excited. And then I had a magazine of this and this SIG Marksman 220 grain open tip match. Now this stuff cost twice as much as this, 75 cents around, $1.50 around. But I figured trying different ammo first was a cheaper solution. And again, not irreversible like drilling out the gas port. And so to me, it was worth paying 30 bucks for a 20 round box just to see what I could get out of it. So things are going much better this time. Uh, I've only had one malfunction so far and uh, seems to be doing pretty well, a lot better than last week. So let's see how it keeps going. I've got some SIG 220 grain open tip uh, subsonic match ammo. That's what's uh, left in this magazine. Let's see how that runs. <laughs> I'll take it. Well, as you can see from the shooting footage, it ran it all perfectly. Um, like I said, I did get one malfunction. It looked like a short stroke. Uh, didn't quite pick up the round at the very, you know, didn't cycle all the way back and pick it up the way it should. But every other round, it ran great. It locked back on the last round every single time, just like it should. And so I am very satisfied with that. I'm going to keep running it. And uh, I think as it gets a little bit more broken in, hopefully I won't have any malfunctions anymore with supersonic or subsonic ammo. So what do I think of this gun and this suppressor now that it's working more reliably? Well, I'm very happy with it. The suppressor is a very short suppressor. It's four inches and that was done on purpose. The whole point of this build was to be short and maneuverable 
something that I could use in tight spaces, hallways and rooms in my home if I needed to. And so I didn't want something making it long and unwieldy. And I knew that I was gonna sacrifice some effectiveness by having a shorter suppressor. And that was fine with me. And that's exactly what I got. It, uh, it literally did exactly what I expected it to. I'm not sure I would call it hearing safe, but it definitely takes most of the edge off. Um, firing supersonic rounds, there's little to almost no recoil. It's very quiet. I wouldn't say very quiet, but it's a lot quieter than it would be unsuppressed. And one of the great things about the whip machine and tool suppressor is it is a reduced blowback suppressor. And it really is. One of the things that I always hear people complain about shooting suppressed is the, the extra gas that you get back in your face. Well, I didn't have any of that last week or this week. In fact, if you watch the shooting footage in this video, there's no like big cloud of gas around me at all while I'm shooting it. And so they weren't lying about that. It really is reduced blowback. And so if you're looking for something that isn't gonna gas you out, the wet machine tool and cans are great for that. Also, if you're looking for something affordable when it comes to suppressors, these are very affordable, which was one of the other reasons that I went with this for my first suppressor. Um, at the time, it was hard to swallow $1,000 for a suppressor. My next one will be <laughs> that $1,000 suppressor, I'm sure. Um, because I am hooked, I'm gonna suppress everything. Might as well, right? Um, but the great thing about these, they go for 300 bucks, you do have to pay the extortion fee, the $200 tax stamp to the government in order to be able to take it home. So you can get your whole suppressor for 500 bucks, tax stamp included. If you're looking to get into a suppressor, um, if you're worried about tuning your gun or being able to make it run reliably suppressed or with subsonic ammo, fear no more. I, I went through that last week. It bummed me out a little bit but it was a very easy fix. Lighter buffer, softer spring, and the thing runs pretty much perfectly now. So that is a huge relief. Also, just having the suppressor makes me feel so much better about if I do have to use this in a home defense situation, that at least if I don't have time to put my ear protection on, which I doubt that I ever would if someone was breaking into my home, um, then at least it wouldn't make me and my family deaf and that's the whole point for this build. I do feel like at this point, this is the perfect home defense build. Short, you got a stock on it now because it's SBR'd. Optic, light, suppressor, decent capacity, great trigger. This is a Geisley SSP single stage trigger. It's got the Radian Talon ambidextrous safety set for 45 degrees, so it's very fast. You can flip it on with your thumb, off with your trigger finger very easily. I feel like this is now the perfect home defense setup, really ideal CQB setup, and the suppressor was the icing on the cake, the last piece to the puzzle to make this what it was supposed to be all along, and I'm very happy with it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, please share it, please leave me a comment, let me know if you have any experience with these whip machine and tool suppressors, or if you have good recommendations for a good 5.56 five, or 9 millimeter suppressor, I wanna get a 9 millimeter can for my AR9, and I wanna get a really good 5.56 five, can for my new dream rifle build. I hope you guys have been following along on that series. Uh, it is by far my nicest AR15, my nicest rifle yet, and uh, it's been a really exciting build. I'm gonna have footage of that build out at the range later this week. From Sawtooth Tactical, stay strapped and get clapped.